Hey, what up YouTube and welcome to Rico GR 101. In this new series of videos I'm, uh, I'm going to be making with this new setup with the top down view. Uh, we're going to be taking a deep dive into the Rico GR3 and the GR3X. Um, this channel already has about 70 videos or so and uh, most of those are uh, concerning the Rico GR and GR3 uh, GR3 and the GR3X and um, I'm going to be reshooting several of those videos but I'm going to be presenting everything in a much more logical order and um, we're going to start out by looking at the physical attributes of the camera first of all and I'm going to take these videos on with in bite-sized chunks so they don't end up getting too long so let's start out by looking at a Ricoh GR3 this is the famous camera right here um, very small very pocketable and uh, a street shooter's dream an excellent camera uh, on the front of the camera you can see we've got some uh, information about the lens we've got uh, the focal length of 18.3 millimeters at an f 2.8 at its widest aperture now this 18.3 might throw some people off uh, because most people will, will have heard that it's a 28 millimeter lens, but it's actually a 28 millimeter equivalent. That means um, this uh, focal length of 18.3 on this uh, APS-C sized crop sensor with a crop factor of 1.5 will give you eight, uh, a 28 millimeter <clears throat> lens equivalent. This is the top of the camera. You have your on off button here, your shooting mode, um, selection here you've got manual TV means time value or shutter speed priority AV is aperture value or aperture priority and P is program mode which lets the camera take over most of the functions for uh, getting a good exposure and then you have U1 2 and 3 these are user options where you can program and save settings in the camera and then assign them to one of these positions. This little nugget over here, you need to press this down to be able to rotate this dial. And that's a safety feature so that you don't accidentally change the shooting mode. So now I can't change it. I have to push this down like that. So that's how that works. I usually shoot in aperture uh, priority AV. This is the shutter button, which takes a picture. It uh, It's a standard shutter button for a digital camera a half press will um, make the camera focus and uh, a full press will take a shot this camera is also famous for its um, full press snap function uh, which means that if you kind of bypass that half press and just bang that button down then it will um, uh, uh, straight away focus to a prefix distance and take a shot and that's very useful in street photography at the front here sticking on the top we have this dial this is a, a dial that uh, changes whichever value you're currently on in aperture priority this will change the aperture so you can change that up and down there uh, if you were in shutter speed it would change the shutter speed so everything is programmable on this uh, camera very much so actually uh, it's probably one of the most customizable cameras I've ever seen. But this is a great little feature that it's nice to be able to hold the camera in one hand and then use your finger to change uh, uh, settings there, take a shot there, and uh, it works great like that. On the back here, we have uh, a, a jog wheel. Now, I call this a jog wheel because it doesn't actually rotate. This one rotates 360. This one can change values by nudging it to the left, nudging it to the right, and it's also a button that you can press in. Okay, now we'll get to all this in uh, in future videos, but right now we're just looking at the physical attributes. You've got a playback button here, and you've got um, an FM button here. Um, playback button, let's say you've taken a bunch of shots and you wanted to check them, you could press this button in, and it would switch to playback mode and uh, show you the most recent shot you've taken and then you can scroll through using uh, any, any of these dials actually you can scroll through the images and see what you've taken um, the FM button 
as standard when you're in playback mode it will delete images that you've taken uh, this rear dial is a dial and a like a d-pad so um, when you press over at the uh, at the top the bottom and the left and the right it acts as buttons so you can click these places here at the top you activate macro mode as standard and then you've got your ISO, ISO settings over there and your drive mode for setting self timers and bracketing and things like that. And then you've got your white balance at the bottom. In the middle, you have a, uh, uh, an OK button, which uh, is a confirmation button for menu selections and things like that. Uh, this also rotates. So if you're in full menu mode, this would usually change your ISO values. Down at the bottom here, we have the main menu button, which takes you into the large menu of the camera and not just a quick menu. And then this button here, DISP, is the, is the display button. In playback mode, this will uh, cycle through the amount of data that you can see about uh, an image you've taken. You can either just see the image as it is, or you can see some details about uh, the conditions when the image was taken. On the side over here, we have uh, another button and um, you can see that this has two functions if you give it a quick press it will activate movie mode as standard and uh, if you give it a long press it will activate the camera's built-in wi-fi um, this camera isn't really that great for uh, shooting video so uh, most people and myself included will reprogram this button to do something much more useful on the top here you have yeah standard hot shoot you can attach things like a flash to that or a thumb grip if you uh, if you wanted to do that i don't i used to have a thumb grip i don't use it anymore you've got a camera strap this one this is the one that's supplied with the camera uh very simple thin lightweight it rolls up to almost nothing and so uh, it's a great strap for this camera because the camera's small, the strap's small, it doesn't uh, take up much space. And that's great. I have added this single piece of rubber tube in here. And uh, this is good for locking it to your wrist. If I go like that, you can just tighten that for a bit of extra security. That's not on a standard, but you can get a piece of tubing from somewhere like a pet store just go down to the aquarium section and find a piece of tubing that fits take the strap with you to check it out on the bottom here we have uh, um, a standard tripod uh, threaded mount there which unfortunately is very close to the battery door uh, so that's something you'll have to consider you've got microphones here and uh, you've got stereo mics here and that might be a mic I'm not sure it might be a little speaker but this is the battery door open that up like that you've got your SD card slot there and your tiny little battery there it's a good idea to get more batteries for a Ricoh GR they are quite power hungry and the batteries are very small but they don't uh, really uh, take up much space in your pocket so two or three batteries uh, when you've got the camera and you're good to go SD card I usually use a, a 64 gigabyte card uh, I don't shoot video, so it doesn't have to be the world's fastest card, just a good uh, modern SD card. And that's about it, really. We just look at some of the functions. Um, like I said, this one can turn the camera on. You press that one, and it goes, it switches the camera on without extending the lens. So it's, it switches it on directly into playback mode as standard. And um, like I said, you can program just about everything uh, and customize everything about this camera. It's really good like that. The display button in playback mode, you can see here, when I press that, you get some information up about how it was taken. We've got your battery level here now. You've got the uh, aperture, the shutter speed, and uh, we've got some information about RAW Plus. That's telling me I'm shooting in RAW Plus JPEGs with some kind of profile. We've got the date up here and the time. We've got the SD card symbol there and the ISO rating. If I press display one more, once more, it will show you the settings of uh, the uh, JPEG profile that I was using. And this uh, icon here shows you that um, IBIS was switched on as well. And we've got uh, a little histogram display over here.
So that is the camera and uh, that's how it works. Now in the next video we're going to take a dive into the menu especially concerning a new Ricoh GR3 and GR3X owners um, that have bought a used camera. I'm going to show you how to reset the camera and then I'm going to walk you through um, how I set up the various settings. Okay, so we'll switch off for now and I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye.